Cherubs, thank you so much for joining me for this video. I don't know why, but for some reason I have felt weird about filming this one. I don't know if it's just where I am in my life and what's going on with me generally, because it's quite an intense time for me just in general, or if this is an intense topic for me and I didn't realise. I'm really not sure what's going on. <laughs> Um, but I have tried to start this a few times and felt a bit like, Ugh. maybe it's the vibe in the hotel room. This is the, the hotel I'm, I'm staying in, in central Amsterdam. I have not filmed anything in here so far. So uh, maybe it's that. Maybe the, the vibe is just not quite right for filming. I'm also very aware that the lighting is doing its thing. Um, I don't want the overhead light on, so I don't, I, I can't tell if this is focusing or not with the lighting concept that I've got, but do you know what? I'm just going to go for it because otherwise I'm never going to do it. So let me just crack this here beer because it might help the situation a little. You know, alcohol can be medicinal for some, darling, not for others. Um, but for me, it sometimes does the trick. Mm. And let me get into it. So essentially, this video is about my goddesses that I venerate in my practice. It is about how I perceive my relationships with each of them separately. And it's gonna just basically be informative to that end. I wanna thank my patrons. I wanna thank my doll faces and my Pop-Tarts patrons because over on Patreon, you actually can vote for a video that you want me to do. So once a month, I actually put out a few different options for a video. And basically my uh, my doll faces and my Pop-Tarts Patreon members get to vote on that particular video, which one they want. And out of the three options that were given to them for this month, they chose to have an update on my whole goddess situation. That was overwhelmingly the popular one, the one that came out on top. I think one was about my journey with therapy, one was about fitness, and one was a update on my whole sort of goddess vibe. And overwhelmingly, my patrons wanted me to speak on this. So I want to thank them for voting and also for giving me some questions that I will get into at the end of the video. I'm going to do a little bit of a Q&A using their questions as some material to be able to do a deeper dive into this whole uh, this whole subject. So thank you so much to my patrons for voting. And if you would like to become a member over on Patreon and have the opportunity to vote on future videos, if you would like to actually have some creative control over what I make using your voting privileges please pop over to patreon I'll leave the link down below and in order to be able to vote monthly on a video that you would like to see you would have to go for either the doll faces option or the pop tarts option so if you go over there it will explain to you what the other benefits are as well I work with two primary goddess figures and that is hell the Norse goddess of the underworld and also the blessed holy mother Mary from the Catholic tradition obviously Mary is from the entire Christian tradition but she is specifically um, not only venerated but I think some could argue deified within the Catholic religion and I am from Irish Catholic stock so there's also that hereditary vibe there with Mary too. So I have these two primary um, goddess figures, some might choose to use the term divine feminine, I'm trying to kind of get away from that phraseology, I'm not sure as much how I feel about that anymore but certainly let's say goddess deities and they I think create quite an interesting and strong mirror of each other for me so personally the way that I view them is not as being in competition with each other I don't see either one of them as being necessarily the primary one in terms of the love that I feel for them or the importance that I place upon them if I was pushed and I had to say which one I walk most closely with on a day-to-day -day basis I would say that that's going to be hell but it's complicated, it's very complicated because they both are very close to me and there are going to be times where hell is very much present and I am obviously significantly primarily walking with her and then there will be times where she will fall back and Mary will feel much more like the primary energy or the primary presence and it's obvious that I'm walking more closely with her. 
there can definitely be times where the scales are balanced and I feel like both of them are there, you know, um, in sort of equal measure. But that is not what I'm aiming for. That is not something that I'm striving for. I do not worry if that is not happening. It doesn't panic me if that's not happening. And I think that one thing that's interesting is that a lot of people, when they ask me about my relationships with Mary and Hell, they're very interested in that. They're interested in like, how do you make sure that things are equal? Um, are they equal? Do you want them to be equal? Is there one that is like actually the matron? I always describe Hell as my matron deity. And that is because I dedicated myself to Hell in a very witchy way. So in a very witchy fashion. I can never remember if it was 2011 or 2012. I don't know why. I, well, I do know why. It's because I've got dyscalculia. So I, I, I'm, I've got sort of almost the numerical version of dyslexia. And so it's quite hard for me to remember dates. And I, I find numbers difficult and stuff. So that's probably part of why. But essentially, at around that kind of time, I dedicated myself to hell. But I did so in a very witchy way. So I actually, you know, the, the dedication that I did that, that sort of made me into a daughter of hell, if you will, and confirmed that I am walking with hell and that I'm going to be doing regular devotionals to hell, etc., was very witchy in nature. And so because I, I consider the word matron to be very much a witchy kind of a word, your matron deity, your matron goddess, I would always give that moniker to hell because I chose her as my matron. And the way that I dedicated myself to her was was in such a witchy fashion where I called her my matron. And so I always would call her my matron deity. But to me, that doesn't mean that Mary gets any less limelight or that she is somehow in, you know, second secondary position. I actually feel like for me, Mary is just, let's say, an energy that has come into my life from a different angle. So hell is a goddess that I discovered in my adulthood. When I first started reading about her and researching her and looking at artistic imagery related to her and stuff like that, I definitely felt that there was a familiarity. I definitely felt that I'd seen her somehow before. I felt a closeness. I felt a bond, even from the very earliest points of getting to know her and learn about her. So that was entirely different to the way that the Blessed Mother Mary came into my life, which was through being born into um, a, a northern sort of like a Liverpudlian I Irish Catholic family where it was very Marian, you know, Mariology in the Irish Catholic tradition is big, you know, it's a, it's a big deal. Um, usually in the, the average sort of like Irish Catholic household, you're likely to find lots of images of Mary. If there are going to be images and statuettes and, and paintings or whatever, then you're going to find a lot of um, Mary-oriented stuff. And the Irish tradition is just very sort of, you know, about the connection with Mary. That is something that I would say is a classic part of Irish Catholicism for many reasons. So for me, Mary is a very old presence in my life. From the earliest days of my existence, I was seeing imagery of holy mother mary um in my nana's house there were multiple statuettes of mary in fact i remember having some extremely potent early experiences with a large statuette about yay large um in her one of her bedrooms um of mary with her arms uh, her arms outstretched and her hands palm up uh, stepping on on the serpent and i remember feeling just oh, this she claimed me she claimed me early early worthy right and then um I sort of fell away from all of that I was still very aware over the years that I felt very comforted visiting cathedrals whenever I would go to a foreign city I'd always have to look at the cathedral whenever I'd go to a city in the UK for any kind of visit I'd always have to go to the cathedral and I'd always light a candle and and make an offering and, and say a prayer I always felt very comfortable seated in um in Catholic churches and uh you know big cathedrals and just sort of like you know, sitting there in a pew and just feeling connected, not necessarily praying, not necessarily communing with Mary, but I never felt uncomfortable in there. I always felt like there was something in there, something about it that was comforting and took me back to my youth where I used to love to go to mass with my Nana. And I was particularly interested in this figure of the, the mother of God. 
So I, I always was aware that that was something that was, I considered it to be, let's say, sort of a sentimental leftover from my childhood, from my upbringing. And I want to make it clear that I was never confirmed. I was not raised in the Catholic tradition. It was just around me constantly, but my parents didn't want to have me confirmed. Of course, they did have me baptised because that would be a stretch too far not to have me baptised. Are you kidding me? My Nana would have shit a brick. Um, but in terms of being confirmed and stuff like that, my parents did not want me to be indoctrinated into the religion. So my cousins were confirmed and stuff, but I wasn't. Um, but I was really interested in the religion and specifically I was very, very drawn to Mary, very drawn to Mary. I was drawn to the saints as well, but there was this very strong bond that I had with Mary. So I always considered it to be sort of a leftover. When I was going through the very, very depths of my mental health problems, I will say that Mary did visit me. I experienced a few visitations from Mary that I can say were extremely comforting and stabilising in nature. And later on, when I decided to really start to open my practice up to Mary, I felt like that was the basis of it, was that she came to me in my lowest moments. And I, I have often said to people that if you are born with a phone connection to Mary, if you are, you know, you if you know her since childhood and you've seen your nana, you know, genuflect in front of her and, and, and you know, you've seen statues of her everywhere and stuff and you feel that strong bond with her if you've got that phone line she will never let you hang up and that's very much how i feel actually coming through the difficulties and the darknesses of my mental health problems uh well the, the the sort of depths of them when i was at my worst and knowing that she was there in those times i felt and saw her i felt her presence and i physically saw her and it calmed me in moments where i was experiencing psychosis and deep depression. So we're basically talking about two different very strong goddess energies coming into my life at different angles. One of them, hell, was this goddess that I chose consciously because I felt like this goddess connects so much with who I am as a human being. This goddess has so much to teach me. I consciously choose her. I, I ask her to come into my life. Whereas with Mary, she was in my life from the start. There wasn't really any asking. There wasn't really any pursuing. When I let her into my practice, it was more of a return to home. So hell made a home for me. Let me make her a home. Mary was the home that was chosen for me almost by, by the divine, by cosmos. She was the figure uh, in which divinity was was stored and comfort and and grace um, and all of those things. So I don't see either of them as being more important than the other. Yes, I do consider hell to be my matron, but that is because of the witchy connection and the fact that I very much consider her to be more of a goddess that is oriented deeply towards my witchhood and what that actually means, what the word witchhood actually means. Whereas Mary, Mary was just always a phone line that was open from birth and I just decided to start picking up my end again and listening. <laughs> so I hope that makes sense. They both mean so much to me. They're both so important to me. And I do think that they mirror and reflect each other really beautifully. They are complementary energies and forces in my life. Mm. Okay, I'm starting to feel a bit more comfortable now. I don't know what was going on before. <laughs> I just don't know. Every so often I just have this weird feeling that I can't start talking. I look like I haven't slept for a million years, but it's because I, I napped in my makeup and it's just gone a bit goth at the bottom, but I quite like it. I, I quite like this Wednesday Adams sort of vibe. Okay, let me have a look at my notes because I wanted to make sure I didn't get too terribly off track with what I'm trying to explain. So yeah, they're complementary energies. They're mirrors of each other. They came in from different angles but it doesn't mean that I think of them in any kind of like hierarchical way, really. The relationships that I have with them both change and deepen all the time. And like I said, it's not like scales where I feel like I completely have to balance the amount of time that I invest or, you know, I would hate that. That would feel so restrictive to me. Instead, I just like things to happen organically. And I never worry if one of them falls back. I might miss them. If one of them falls back and I don't have any signs from them or I don't really feel their presence um, or I feel like I'm doing devotional to them, but I don't think they're really I feel like there's just not that 
closeness if you if you don't work with personified deity some of this might be a bit abstract and you might be feeling like you don't understand what i mean but if you do work with with personified deity you're probably going to get what i'm saying but sometimes there isn't that feeling that they are really there or that they've turned up for a while i don't personally worry about that i think there would be a point at which i would worry if it really got to that stage where it had been like you know fucking months and months and months and months um and that definitely would upset me i think it's never that long but i can tell you that hell definitely does fall back for significant measures of time and i have learned from working with her for so long that for, for me and the relationship i have with hell that's just part of what that's just part of the mechanisms of her guiding me teaching me and allowing me to, to fall into closer formation with myself and into alignment with what is going on with me and what my needs are and what my answers are she's not going to be on tap she's just not that kind of a, of a presence for me personally i do devotionals to both hell and to the blessed mother mary and again it's very much an organic thing where i just let myself sort of lean into when I want to do devotionals, so how often, and what I do what feels right, basically. Some days I'll wake up and I'll actually draw a card to receive a message from Mary and to receive a message from hell. It feels really weird for me to say Mary without saying Mother Mary or Holy Mother Mary or the Blessed Holy Mother Mary. <laughs> um, and uh, But it's funny because in devotional I do often refer to hell as uh, as the Dark Mother um uh or the, the cosmic mother of the dark womb or i have lots of the queen of the lowest world i have lots of titles for hell as well but when i'm talking about them to camera talking to to you guys about them it feels weird because hell seems to be a standalone name when i'm talking whereas when i say mary it just feels like i'm talking about the girl next door i don't i just for some reason i have to say mother mary at the very least um yeah uh, so it's funny, that's quite funny. But in devotional, I, w I want to assure you that hell has just as many um, names as uh, as Mary, who obviously also turns up in lots of different guises. Um, you know, you've got like Our Lady of Sorrows, um, Our Lady Star of the Sea, you know, all those different, different names um, and different sort of like different guises. Um, you've got different sightings of Mary that will that have given birth to different um, names for her, like Our Lady of Walsingham, um, which is based on, you know, a sighting of her at Walsingham in the UK. Our Lady of Lords, obviously based on the extremely famous sighting of her at Lords. Um, so, yeah, you know, you've got all of these many, many names for Mary. And um, some of them are, are absolutely beautiful. But for me, I've also got those beautiful names for hell that I've come up with over the course of time. I love to refer to her as the queen of the lowest world. Um, that's one that, that I think is just mm, mm, chef's kiss. It just fits so well. Oh, this chair is so rickety. Okay. <clears throat> so basically, yeah, I do devotionals for them both. Um, it's really how I feel. Devotionals usually involve going through the beads. So with, with Mary, it's usually a rosary. With Hell, it is um, a specific set of beads that I've had made by various witches um, that are more connected to Hell and have the kind of stones that, that I like for Hell, like Jet and Snowflake Obsidian and stuff like that. And I work with rosaries for, um, for Mother Mary. And I pray and I um, I do addresses and uh, I do addresses to both Hell and Mary and I also write sacred poetry to both Hell and Mary. I actually write a lot of poetry about goddess energy in general and specifically I write poems that are dedicated to Mary and poems that are dedicated to Hell uh, and uh, if you want to read my poetry whether it's goddess related or related to other stuff I do actually put my poetry online now I do have an Instagram account which is dedicated to exhibiting my poetry so if you would like to read some of my poetry then click down below I will leave the link in the description for you and some of that is very goddess centric and is very much about the roles that these two specific um the presences have played in my life but also just about goddess energy in general and the goddess vibe in general which i definitely connect with more in a nameless and all-encompassing way too uh, for me goddess is not just encapsulated by mary in hell it's also just i feel the presence of the goddess and for me it's almost like a kaleidoscope of different imagery different names different facets different associations that run through my head when i'm thinking about the goddess as an overall archetype 
And so I see definitely lots of different shards or lots of different, you know, facets of the diamond or however you want to say it, the goddess with the goddess having many different faces. And I see the value of connecting to those faces, names and energies and stories individually. But I also do just connect with the goddess. And I think a lot of people that work with specific goddesses will also get what I mean when I say that I just connect with the goddess overall as well. And it doesn't always have to be about it falling into Mary territory or hell territory. It's just the goddess. So certainly I, when I do devotionals, I'm usually doing devotionals to Mary or hell, but I have been uh, doing devotionals on and off for years to just the goddess as well. And usually I will find an image or collect together a bunch of images that are just representative to me of the goddess energy according to my psyche and according to, to sort of my perceptions. I have a sacred devotional candle for Mary and I have a sacred devotional candle to hell on my altar at home. So I have a black candle for hell and a, and a pink candle for the Mother Mary. I have imagery of both and statuettes of both. So it's, uh, it's Mary on the left and hell on the right. And uh, no particular reason why, that's just the way it turned out. Um, maybe, maybe there is a reason why. Maybe it's because I'm a lefty and um, I've been a lefty obviously since I was born and Mary's been a feature in my life since I was born. So maybe there's that. Maybe that's why Mary's on the left, I guess, on my left. So um, yeah, I, I do devotionals which involve prayer. It involves, you know, the, the repetition of mantras. It may involve sacred poetry. It certainly involves card draws and it involves just opening myself as a receptacle for the wisdom of these two presences to come through so whichever one I'm doing a devotional to I'm listening I'm also in sacred prayer so I'm just like basically thanking these incredible presences or the, the whatever one I'm doing a devotional to at the time for being in my life and uh, I make offerings I use sacred oils so I have a specific oil for hell that I use and I usually use rose water um, and rose scented perfumes for Mary so um, I, I give uh, apples as offerings to hell. I give uh, flowers as offerings to Mary. Offerings are not so common anymore. I usually will do them on either Marian feast days in the in uh, when I'm working with Mary. So there are some specific feast days like Mary's birthday. Definitely, she will be getting flowers and and perfume, and you know it will be very sort of trussed up that part of my altar. And then with Hell, uh, Samhain is the big time that I will make some offerings to her, although I sometimes will make offerings during the half moon as well. And there are specific reasons why I might make offerings during the half moon too. So one thing that's different between the way that I make devotion to Hell and the way that I make devotion to Mary is that Hell actually told me a couple of years ago that she wanted me to sweat to honour her. And I took that to mean that when I do my workouts and when I go to the gym or when I'm on the mat, when I'm doing anything that involves um, putting my body through its paces, that is a devotional to her. And that's how she sees it. So all of my gym work and my mat work and everything, anything that I do to really form a closer connection and strengthen up my physical vessel is dedicated to hell. And uh, that's something that, that hell sort of let me know would be beneficial for our relationship. And I think it has been not only beneficial for our relationship, but also very beneficial for me, obviously, as a human being. Uh, Mary doesn't really give me any specific instructions on things that would make devotional more powerful or more deep. However, I will say for the record that when I do visit cathedrals, when I do visit grottos, when I do see um, statuettes of her in her natural societal home, which is in church, right? In Catholic churches and cathedrals. And I get to light an offering candle and genuflect and pray. That is definitely a time where I feel like my connection with her is strengthened. And that's one thing that I will say about the difference between working with Mother Mary and the difference between working with hell is that obviously the image of Mary is incredibly normative in society. The image of Mary is um, venerated in great, big, very ostentatious buildings in, you know, lots of different parts of the world. So that is something that I find to be very helpful and very attractive for me about my relationship with the Blessed Virgin Mother is that she is actually sort of like I can walk into a Catholic church and I can see literally a statuette or a statue dedicated to her and people sort of 
um, you know, genuflecting and being in, in prayer and being in contemplation with her. And that's something that's very useful. So I will say that today, for example, on the day of filming this video, I just visited the Basilica of St. Nicholas, which is round the corner from the hotel where I'm staying. And I had some very, very profound experiences of sitting with the statues of the Blessed Mother and the mother and child. I lit uh, an offering candle and I prayed to Mother Mary whilst looking at this beautiful, huge statue of her. And that definitely helps. I mean, look, I'm not going to lie. If there were buildings that were similarly dedicated to hell that I could just pop into on the corner of a street anywhere in the world, that would be fucking useful. I mean, I would love that. <laughs> so that's something that does make my devotionals or my let's say my devotion to Mary, I think a lot easier is that, you know, it's normative to actually see imagery of her so that's definitely a noticeable difference that makes it easier for me i think to create that sense of devotion with mary sometimes where i feel like that is missing with hell but with hell i have this other thing where she wants me to be in the gym so i guess <laughs> where hell is concerned the gym is the cathedral <laughs> I do receive signs from both Mary and Hell, but I do think there's a difference in the signs that I receive. So there's a few different things that I can know. I don't want to go into everything because it's just going to be so much and the video is just going to end up being three, three hours long or whatever. But the main differences that I would say is that Hell utilises very specific imagery, which is very repetitious. So the same things will come up time and time over. And the same tarot cards, she uses the same tarot cards as well to let me know various things or she'll repeat the same tarot card. It will come up in a noticeably repetitious manner. It will be very frequent. Um, I've come to understand what these various different, very specific images are that uh, she sends to me and what they tend to mean. And so over the course of time, it's been a little bit like learning a language. Amongst these images are any kind of black bird, not just ravens, but any kind of black bird. Um, runes, very common. In fact, the lighting fixture in my hotel room looks a lot like the rune manners. And uh, I felt like that was very connected to, to her and to our work. You know, she'll show me sort of like some twigs on the ground in the shape of a rune or there's lots of different things in the shape of runes when you when you're really switched onto that and you're and you, a part of your brain is looking for it. She also utilizes the imagery of swords. And uh, for me, there's a very strong connection between the goddess hell and the ace of swords. She's just very uh, there, there's there's a few other things I won't go into everything but she's very specific about the imagery and the imagery will be repetitious so it's become easy for me to understand like oh that's something that's connected to hell that's from her and that is very um, joyful for me it's amazing that I have that that um, clear sign because it comes through time after time and she's let me know time after time like yeah that's me that's me that that number is me that rune you're seeing is me that bird that yeah you know whatever there's like a, a list that I could give you whereas with Mary um the signs that I receive and the messages that I receive are a lot more vibrational slash energetic slash emotional in nature and it's more about a certain state that comes over me that makes me know that she's there and that she is reassuring me of something or that she is moving me gently away from something. Um, so it's less about imagery, although, of course, you know, sometimes she can just actually her herself can just turn up like I'm on a bus and I'm looking out the window and I go past the Catholic Church and there's a grotto outside and Mary is right there, you know. Or there's a lot of imagery in general that is just sort of based on the aesthetics of the Virgin Mary. So that, you know, you, I might see sort of like a, you know, a statue or a painting or a depiction of a woman with a veil on or a cloak and or something. And I get that vibe as well there. So there's, there is that. But generally, she doesn't come to me quite so much in terms of signs. She doesn't give me sort of like imagery to work with, but it will normally be a vibe, an energy, a feeling that, that moves over me like an energetic blanket of sorts and makes me realise that she is there. I would say that a lot of the time when hell comes through in clear signs and is speaking to me in straight sentences, a lot of the time the messages that she's giving are more literally instructional than what I would get from 
Mary. It's not to say that Mary doesn't give me instruction necessarily, but there is just very much more of a compassionate mother, you are held in this moment kind of a vibe coming through from Mary, which you would expect, of course, although there is a lot of badassery to Mother Mary as well. And I think that's something that people who don't work with her and are not familiar with her will sometimes overlook. It's just exactly how fucking badass she is and how she has that fucking fierce lioness mother vibe too and there is a warrior aspect to the blessed holy mother um oh i'm getting chills as i'm talking about it oh my god i love it i <laughs> love 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 it sorry about this rickety chair <laughs> uh, um so yeah i think that people might miss that if they don't have any sort of context for it but yeah, there is very much a you are held, I am here in this moment kind of a vibe. Whereas hell is, it can, can be that way, but she's usually more strategic. There's usually more of an instruction. There's usually more of a warning element coming through where she's guiding me away from something or I'm questioning something and she's coming through like righteously with the, you know what to do. I'm just underlining it for you. And, and I'm having a very strong memory of a time, and I will share this with you, where, um, sorry, I'm just checking the time because I'm gonna need to cut this video for a while to see a client and then come back to it. Um, I will share this with you that I was in Westminster Abbey and I was in the um, the chapel for uh, King Henry the Seventh, and there's a beautiful little altar in there with an image of the, of the Holy Mother and Child and a beautiful sort of big candle in front and a place where you can kneel. And um, I, I knelt there and I said a prayer and I asked for protection over a specific relationship in my life. And I asked Mary for guidance on that relationship and to just protect and shield that relationship and to help us within the relationship to really connect with the commitments that we'd made to each other because it had been a hard road with this particular connection. And um, I remember saying that prayer and turning around. And just as I was leaving, there was this glass display case on the left hand side. And it contained the uh, the battle sword of Henry the seventh, this big long sword in a glass case. And that was like my goddesses coming together to guide me because that was hell in that moment. I felt it. I saw that sword and it was her saying, cut it off, cut it off. It is a gangrenous limb and it is only going to keep hurting you. You know, there's no prayer that will deliver benediction on this one. You've got to get rid of it. You've got to look after you. You are married to yourself. You know, don't make me keep reminding you of that. Just remember it and keep remembering it. You don't need this person to feel strong and to feel whole. You have everything you need inside of yourself. It was a potent moment where I felt very strongly that it was almost as though my two mothers had held hands and collided around me in love and in illumination. And uh, very, very shortly after I received that sign, I saw in no uncertain terms exactly what she was saying to me, exactly what they both really were saying to me, which was this relationship is deeply unhealthy and is harming you beyond measure and you cannot ever go back you have to close that door for good um and yeah that's what i did another thing that i will say that is different between my connection with mary and my connection with hell is that mary does come through more in my dreams and in my daydreams if you will but i actually consciously make more journeys to hell and i actually spend more time in her kingdom she does come through in dreams for me as well but I feel like I can connect more imaginatively or astrally. I mean, I use those two words interchangeably um, personally because I feel like the imagination is the astral. That's just my view on it. But I feel like I can connect much more with Hell's environment and meet her there and actually have meaningful con sort of communication and dialogue with her in that astral form 
it's harder for me to do that with Mary. It's harder for me to like journey to Mary per se. For me, Mary will come through more in my dreams or daydreams or when I've otherwise not necessarily consciously reached out for it or tried to make it happen. Whereas with Hell, she will turn up less in my dreams and daydreams and stuff like that. So it will be more when I'm actually consciously doing devotionals to her or I'm journeying to converse with her. And by journeying to converse with her, I mean that I am like doing a deep visualization where I go down, I take the elevator almost, I see it down into her kingdom and I go over the bridge and I, I see her, I commune with her. And there's lots of different experiences that I've had that I won't go into that have very much characterized the way that those... Um, those visions and those journeys have taken place and what they've taught me i certainly can um journey to mary but it's not as common it's not as common usually i feel like with mary it's more it's just not what i do it, the, the, the thing about making a video like this is it's so complicated in a way because there are some things that just happen the way that they happen and you can't really give any logical or rational explanation. There's no sort of workings for why one thing happens one way and one, thing's happen one thing happens another way. But hopefully I've made a little bit of sense anyway with that. When it comes to hell, it's more of a conscious decision to journey to her realm and to seek that interaction and therefore to have those significant moments of um communion whereas with mary it, journeying to her astrally or within the deep and potent imagination is not so much what's going on one thing that i really love about working with hell is that i think hell is very similar to who i am as a person in many ways I think that her relationship with her father is very interesting and who her father is, Loki, by the way. Um, <laughs> big deal, kind of a big deal. I don't know if you've heard of Loki. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, he's kind of a big deal. Ron Burgundy style. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I think that there's that. There's her relationships with her siblings, uh, Fenrir and Jormungunda. And then also there is the sense of her as having a specific sort of kingdom, ruling her kingdom uh, child-free, unmarried, and kind of running her own shit. Being very connected to the theme of death is another thing. Being sort of part light and part shadow, or actually being part skeletal and part fleshly. All of these things really tap me into who I am as a human being and tap me into my identity. With Mary, it's less about seeing myself reflected in her. I do see myself reflected in her as the caregiver and as the healer and as someone who does the work that I do in the world. And she is very influential in reminding me to do that work in a healthy way but also to embrace that role within myself and not to be afraid of it, but to know that it is absolutely part of what I should be doing with my life and it will always be woven into the fabric of my life. It is part of the tapestry of who I am. So in terms of, of being, of, of holding that strong mother energy, I definitely relate to that as a similarity within myself. But I think with Mary, it's much more like, Lately, for instance, I've been much more connected to the image of Mary with uh, with child, uh, the mother Mary holding the Christ child. That's usually not the image of Mary that I would go for. I normally like to engage with images of Mary alone as the Queen of Heaven or images of Mary crushing the head of the serpent. I really like images of Mary on her own without the Christ child because Christ is not necessarily part of what comes into my particular lived tradition. And even though, of course, I acknowledge Mary as the mother of God and I love that aspect of her beingness i love that facet on the diamond of the virgin mother of course um i don't usually overly feel connected to christ as a figure um but lately i've been really connecting much more with the image of mary with child um in fact i'm actually looking right now at two postcards that i picked up from the basilica both of which are images of course of um the mother mary with the christ child and normally i would not pick up these kind of images they would not be the images that i would go for i usually like mary like i said as the queen of heaven uh mary alone basically um, so it's interesting to me that I'm connecting more with her as the image of a mother and that's really becoming something that is much more helpful to me and I've realized that I'm having that that let's say that evolution 
of my ideas about Mary and I'm really coming to connect with her more as the actual literal mother, the literal maternal force, because I need that right now. And whenever I see an image of her with the Christ child, I think of her as holding me. I think of myself as that Christ child. I think of her as being that very maternal guiding force. And that's what I need in this moment. I need to feel held as a mother would hold a defenseless child who is open to harm and who is who is needing protection. So that's been an interesting evolution of my idea about how I want my particular Mary to be represented. And it's not that I was ever really, you know, I ever, I ever really disliked the image of her with Jesus. Of course, I've seen many statues and many images of her holding Jesus, obviously, as a baby. And that's very common in, in the iconography. But it's never where I've felt that really strong connection with how I view Mary and how I work with her. But I've noticed just lately that I have really enjoyed images of her actually as the literal mother and, and the thought of her is that maternal force watching protectively over a defenseless child who has great power and great potential, but still requires that that connection um, and that that overseeing of the mother. And that's been something that has just been important to me lately. And it's just really helped me. So it's interesting when you work with personified deity of any kind, because you can really find that you get evolutions within that relationship. And I'm getting so emotional as I'm talking about this because it's been really meaningful to me that even after all of these years of having Mary in my life, I still can find that my relationship with her evolves and deepens and there's rooms, there's rooms and rooms and rooms in the mansion of her and in the mansion of hell also. And some of them are full of mirrors that reflect me back to myself. And some of them are rabbit holes that welcome me to jump down and be brave and see what's in there. And I'm so glad that I gave myself the opportunity to work with Personified Deity. And I'd love to hear in the comments from anybody who works with Personified Deity and finds that they also have these evolutions, these phases in the relationship, just as they would do with human beings. Um, because there's something just so incredible about that. And it really... It's such a gift that I gave to myself because I was so unsure about my instinct that I wanted to work with personified deity and that I wanted to really let those experiences in. I was very funny about it for ages and I'm so glad that I finally allowed that to happen. My memory is definitely going to fail me now that I'm looking to bring to mind some other significant influences that I work with in terms of personified deity or in terms of you know historical figures, the, the energetic um, presence of historical figures, archetypes, that kind of thing. I'm probably not going to go into archetypes actually because really this video is going to be long enough. Um, but I do work closely with St Joan of Arc um, I do have a, a connection to various different historical figures, literary figures particularly, like Sylvia Plath, I have a close relationship with. Um, in the art world, Frida Kahlo, I, I'm closely connected with and have been for a very long time. Um, definitely feeling very closely connected to Dorothea Tanning in the last year. Um, you know, there's there's various different things. Like everybody knows I'm really bang into Freddie Mercury. Everybody knows that I see Oscar Wilde as being, you know, a very sort of strong divine masculine sort of energy for me. Uh, I, I mean, I've talked on and off about various figures that are important to me or saints that are important to me. And there's like this outer flank of goddesses that I'm connected to for one reason or another. So I feel connected to Carly from being a young girl, my stepfather was raised in India and Nepal and there was a lot of that kind of imagery around and I was connected to Kali and the story of Kali very young and uh, saw, you know, imagery of, of Indian gods from young, Hindu gods from young. Um, so there's that to it. There's Athena I'm very connected to, Bast I feel very connected to, Aphrodite I'm starting to feel more connected to and there have definitely been sort of like signs to that end but I wouldn't say that I have working relationships with any of them at all. They're just goddesses that I just feel connected to you know there's a there's a vibe there there's a history there there are reasons why those goddesses are important there are reasons why those goddesses register with me perhaps more than other goddesses do I also have a patron god um Tia or Toir as you're supposed to say it 
um and uh, yeah i'll i'll leave some information down below about uh, about that particular god if you want to know more but uh yeah Tyr is a norse god and um the connection with him i think began in 2014 and certainly there have been times where he's come to me or, or we've interacted but he's certainly not some not not a, a deity that i consistently venerate in any frequent way but i know that he's claimed me if that makes sense and again it's not going to make sense to everybody watching this but i think it will make sense to some of you okay i'm going to pop my specs on because i want to have a little look at some of the questions that my patrons have asked me i'm by no means going to be able to get to them all but there are definitely a few on here that i can just sort of scroll through and have a little quick fire q a so has the goddess journey inspired any interesting writing poetry journal entries short stories that you might like to share i probably would actually do a separate video where i read my goddess specific poetry and devotional poetry but as I've said earlier in this video, yeah, definitely my connections with goddesses do inspire poetry and they do inspire entries in my book of mirrors and that kind of thing. So that's definitely something that happens. Yes. One of my patrons is asking if I carry any negative baggage from Catholicism when working with Mother Mary. I would say no. I would say that I definitely have had on and off when I was younger negative baggage around churches and around imagery that was overtly church-like in nature and difficult feelings about the institution of Catholicism but in extracting Mary from Catholicism that's something that I have always felt was very comfortable very natural and very obvious to me extracting her from the rest of the doctrine and from the way that I feel that her image and her story is sometimes actually used for the purposes of propaganda if I can be so bold I feel like there's something very obvious for me about disconnecting like pulling that plug and taking Mary for myself and not connecting her overtly with the rest of the Catholic doctrine so no I haven't actually personally had any issues with that However, I think part of the reason that I may not have had any issues with that is because I was not technically raised in the faith. I was raised around the faith. I was raised in a family for whom the faith was central. But my parents didn't want to actually have me indoctrinated into the faith. I wasn't raised going to mass every Sunday, for example. I went to mass when I wanted to with my Catholic nana or with Catholic members of the family. It was not something that was foisted upon me. And so I think there's actually different layers to it for people who were raised within the religion when they start to sort of break parts off and take those parts away they feel like there is a betrayal there or there is something weird going on there and I never really got that vibe I never really got that sense for myself with my experience but I can understand why people who were raised within the faith would have that experience and maybe I will have to put some notes together to sort of talk more about how that can be overcome and if that can be overcome i don't think it can be overcome for everybody but certainly lots of people that were raised catholic or raised under the christian umbrella have managed to come away with you know working relationships with angels for example or the veneration of saints or the connection with mary and it's been okay so really depends where you're coming from how many hurdles you have to overcome in that regard people are very different someone's asking me here if i believe that goddesses are just manifestations of myself uh, when i speak to goddesses how do i know it's them and not just me i'm going to leave a video down below on uh, working with deity as a pantheist and that might clear up some of my thoughts and feelings on that particular topic but i do think that some of it is just a little bit too complex to allow for language to really be able to explain properly i do think that it goes beyond language and it goes beyond my ability to help somebody to understand my reasoning because my reasoning isn't necessarily there it's not a reasoning type of a thing it's more of a deeply feeling into it kind of a thing and just just a knowing just a deep knowing that this is what should be happening and that this is something that is both within me and beyond me and that that makes sense but it's not something that can be translated to everybody it's not something that everybody is going to get and that's why not everybody works this way but i'll definitely leave down below a video about working with deity as a pantheist and i do think that clears up some of what is going on with me 
when I'm working with my goddesses and with other beings. Lots of resources for having personified deity in your life or on your altar emphasise the old-fashioned offering giving to maintain the energetic relationship balance. What is your take on this and does it play a role in your relationship with any deities? No, I don't give offerings to maintain a relationship energy balance or anything like that. I don't feel like I need to do that. I give offerings um, out of respect and because it feels right to do it and because I'm a giving person that actually I like to give gifts. I like to give presents. It's something that's like well known about me amongst my friends. So um, because that's something I suppose that's part of my personality, that's part of why offerings make sense. I don't give offerings as a request for something like you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours kind of thing. Uh, I feel that when I ask my goddesses to be there to provide me with strength and stuff, they are there to provide me with strength. And that is partly because I see them as a mirror of something which is deeply invested within me and which I can summon out of myself and I can connect with through looking at the mirror of them. So I suppose that is quite a pantheistic look on things, a pantheistic take on things. Certainly that would mean that I do not feel like I need to give offerings in order to make petition for something that I want or need. But offerings do feel natural and sensible and right when it seems organic and it seems correct to give them. And so that's when I do it. And offerings are usually made on feast day. So it's going to be Samhain for hell or it's going to be the half moon for hell. And it's going to be the main Marian feast days with Mary. How do you keep it fresh and how does the relationship evolve over time? I mean, to me, I've spoken in this video about how my relationship with Mary in, in particular has evolved over time and evolved recently. There's recently been kind of like a, a progression and a revelation for me in terms of how I see her in imagery and what that means to me and stuff. And the reason that such changes and such shifts are able to happen is because I'm open to them happening and I think that's one thing that I will say that I want to round up this video with is that it's very important to avoid rigidity of thought around this kind of thing if you can if you're going to allow this kind of relationship to be in your life try to allow for some flexibility in the way things are going to shift and change the tectonic plates are going to move over the course of time Try not to worry too much if things don't evolve exactly as you want them to or if they don't evolve on the on the timeline that your ego has in mind. Try to allow for things to dance and move um, organically in a way that doesn't scare you, but actually just makes you feel inquisitive and curious and excited about the connection and what it can bring. And I would say definitely if you know that you've got a very rigid take on what your relationship with a deity should mean or what it's going to give to you or how it's going to continue... Just be aware of the fact that you might be putting yourself into a vulnerable headspace by forging that sense of rigidity and that sense of stiffness around what is happening. Because ultimately, we do need to allow for changes in our relationships with deities, just as we need to allow for some flexibility and some change in our relationships with human beings. So... With all of that being said, with hopefully some of those juicy questions being answered, I know there were quite a few more that patrons asked, so I'm definitely going to consider making a Q&A video using the rest of the questions because I know that a lot of people do really appreciate these chats about veneration of goddesses and working with deity and stuff like that. They tend to be the um, videos that people deeply appreciate when I put them on this channel so I'll definitely be using the rest of the questions as jumping off points for a further video. And thank you so much for watching. And again, if you would like to be involved in the next video vote to decide which video is going to come next in August, there's going to be a video vote then. So make sure you sign up as a Dollface or as a Pop-Tart on my Patreon in order to be able to get involved in um, helping me to curate my body of work. If you want to be collaborative, if you want to vote in order to uh, make a decision about what I put on this channel and also have an opportunity to ask me questions about the subject get over onto Patreon and join us on there for the discussion, the voting, the live streams and everything else that goes down. Okay, much love darlings. Until next time, blessed be and Goddess be with you. Mwah.